I'm Lorraine Nylon and, and I'm an author and I write about spirituality and getting to understand ourselves better. When I was about eight year old and I was staying at my grandmother's place and I, we're, we're Scottish descent, my mother's Scottish, and there was a man standing in the lounge room where I was sleeping in a kilt and he told me that he'd come to say goodbye. So I watched him and I, I, I still have this vivid memory of his kilt swishing up the way up the hallway to my grandmother's bedroom and in the morning I'd said to my granny that the, who was the man in the kilt who who was he and she she asked me questions what do you mean who was the man in the kilt and I explained that he came and that he told me to if everything was okay he'd come to say goodbye and I didn't feel scared and and I could see him as clear as what I can see most people and then she she sort of asked me to explain the kilt and I can remember explaining different parts of the kilt and the colour and and she said I think that's Davy, one of her sons so an uncle I'd never met and then the phone rang about 10 o'clock or it might have been earlier to say that Davy had passed away and that was the start of me understanding that I was seeing things that other people weren't seeing and and it was just sort of accepted in my family it wasn't a it wasn't a big thing it was just sort of like okay yeah uh, you see that and which was good because then it doesn't put any pressure on you and then just from there I've just learned to understand that I could see different things I can't do it on tap so I can't request to see things, but when they're there, I don't ignore them. And and it sort of started that path of exploring the mystic side of life and knowing that we're part of a bigger picture. As I got older and, you know, working with different mentors and things like that, I learned to know the difference between a crossed over soul, one that is has returned to whatever you want to call where we come from. So say heaven is the the most common one that is visiting. So I call that a crossed over soul to someone that is st stuck. And I, you know, that's what we refer to ghosts and spirits. And so has actually gone through the process that after we die, we return to our origins. So, so the crossed over soul is a visiting soul coming back to give a message. They're not, they don't anchor to us, they don't stay around us. They, they come for a limited amount of time and depending on the person and the situation. So they're, they're in constant, they're working from their consciousness, from the, the true essence of themselves, very aware of what they are part of. So the bigger collective consciousness. A stuck soul is has unfinished business or they've just decided that they didn't want to use that awakening period. So from what I've experienced and a lot of ancient texts have the same thing is that after you die and about three days after your funeral there's this awakened energy that's what I call it think of it like a bus ticket home so it's with you all the time and you've got still got complete free will on whether you're going to cross over or not now most people once they die they cross over straight away a lot of people, especially mothers that are concerned about children, will hover around for a little while. That's okay too. But after the funeral, there's about a, a three-day window where that awakening energy starts to diminish, like you're choosing not to cross over. So some people can be very attached to this life and they refuse to let it go. They can be very attached to their job. They can fear returning because they don't like how they've lived this lifetime. And some can actually be really, really confused about what they're experiencing. Now this, the normal is that we have a complete understanding and off we go. You know, it's normally someone that is emotionally impacted and very stuck in their own views of themselves. So what they'll do is they'll then kind of live in what we call the mass energy lots of people have different astral plane lots of people have different names for the same thing so they'll be there without a physical body and some some will just attach to different things or if they've got an addiction they'll go to places where they can act out that addiction some can be stuck in a loop 
where they're living the last five minutes of their life or living a traumatic experience or trying to create a perception of themselves. Sometimes I see uh, stuck souls pretending to be spirit guides and, you know, spiritually elite, and they're not. They're just, they're just stuck souls pretending. So you get, you know, it's 101 varieties of what can occur. So when we come together with people, we create a collective energy. So we're having a conversation and there's a collective energy between the two of us. When we walk away, that energy just dissipates and my energy comes back to me and your energy comes back to you. Unless we've had an exchange where our energy might stay with each other for a while. You know, in the energetics, there are light entities that are also, and we've got lots of names for them as well. So we, there is this other world that is is part of what we're experiencing but because we don't understand it we don't talk about it a lot and we don't sometimes when we feel something if we can't understand it we try to deny it and pretend it's not real which makes sense if we can't you know if we don't know how to explain it you know we're going to do that but there is a lot more than what we see and there is those energies that are helping us those entities that are helping us and there are also those that really would like to keep our evolution stagnant so it's got more control and power and we you know we go into things like watiko energy where there's a collective energy i i've wrote a lot about controlled evolution energy like the types of energies that try to control our evolution so we don't surpass we don't evolve because once we do keep evolving then the negativity and the control structures can't be sustained. We have people like narcissist people and abusers, and they work very much with the negative, really low vibrational energy. It's all about selfishness, greed, control, all those things. And you know, a lot of them can be in power and can control a lot of our our existence as well so there's lots of different energies that are working either for us or against us and then that's where it's important for us to know ourselves and to really understand what we resonate with because when we align with the negative energy like when if we align with judgment and jealousy and the willingness to be condescending and nasty to other people we're becoming part of that collective energy. We're part of sourcing it. When we're looking at our soul purpose, there's a few things that we need to have to, we have to identify. We need to identify what it is we're worshipping and is it of truth? Is, is it a counterfeit God that we're worshipping or is it something that resonates with us? And ways that we can do that is try and explore why we are gravitating to whatever it is that we're worshipping. So it's looking at what is the purpose and why are we trying to force, why are we worshipping that? Now, the sad part is, is sometimes we don't even realise that we're worshipping the wrong thing. And we don't even realize that sometimes it can be like things like victimhood and resentment and all these really negative emotions and we're protecting them. And because we are protecting them, we're not actually evolving from them. And so what we'll look for is something to justify and defend but protecting these emotions that we don't allow ourselves to deal with. So if we've got resentment and we've got jealousy and all the rest of it, we might then worship having more material possessions and being better than somebody else and, and having more power and all those kind of things become what are attracting to us and that we can class them as counterfeiting gods because they're what we're going to hand ourselves over to and what we're going to really invest in. But the trouble is if we come back and we deal with, say, the resentment and the jealousy, we're going to create freedom for our souls. We're going to give ourselves permission to be an expression of ourselves. And we may journey forward and we may still get the bigger house and the and the money and the things that, 
but it won't be because that's the focus it will be because it's attracting to you and a lot of the time what you see now is people are dealing with manifestation and they're talking about it all the time and that can actually become a counterfeiting god scenario as well because it becomes about wanting 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 i want this i want this i want this and the wanting becomes what we're worshiping instead of being part of the true experiencing that the true experience that we're having and using that as experience to learn more about ourselves and start evolving some of the things that we've carried from previous lives when we got a little bit lost so that we can actually evolve our soul so the purpose is to is evolution but to evolve we need to understand what is out of kilter and a barrier to the truth of our soul and when we're falsely worshiping the wrong things image you know materialism all those things it makes it harder for us to find but on the flip side that actually might be the path that you need to walk so you can understand it's not what you want so that's goes into the uniqueness of everyone's journey when we're looking at ourselves as souls we're going to look at integration we're going to look at unity within all parts of ourselves so if we have belief systems and they could be negative belief systems about ourselves if we have these carried unresolved emotions and we keep carrying them around we can strive to be more spiritual but unless we deal with that stuff there'll be energy that's out of kilter with our natural selves so part of the evolutionary process is resolute recovering and resolving what is out of kilter with the truth of ourselves so it's of a different vibration it's and it's what we class as negativity and then taking the lessons from that and working out how to be a true expression of ourselves. The secret when people ask me about rich people and what is their secret, I think what we really need to do is define what we class as rich and what we class as successful. Because when we do cross over, when it's our turn because you know, we're all getting one. No one's getting off the planet alive is it's not going to be about how much money you have in the bank. It's not going to be about the yacht that you have. It's going to be about your experiences and what how did you turn up in those experiences? Did you turn up caring and loving? Did you turn up with compassion? Or did you turn up, you know, pushing people away, down and scaling people because there's one thing for all of us we, there's an equality in each of our souls. The difference is we're all having different experiences. But your soul, my soul, everybody else's soul is the same equality, regardless of what we're experiencing this lifetime or how much power we have this lifetime. There's an equality of all souls. So defining what we class as a successful life for ourselves gives us the freedom to live how we want but if we only scale riches with money and possessions most of the time we're lost so each of us have our own unique connection to our source and whatever label you want to put it is just part of the experience that you're having and we're all meant to have different experiences and we've all through the time you know the through the humanities evolution we've created lots of different ways to try and explain it to ourselves so each of us have our own connection to divinity and our job is to find our path back to recognizing and operating from our own divinity now when we're looking at healing trauma and things like that the first thing we need to do is to acknowledge the truth of what we've experienced and a lot of the time trauma comes with a lot of self-deception where we blame ourselves we judge ourselves and all the rest of it so part of the healing process is to really understand what we've experienced how it's made us feel and then to remind ourselves that 
within us is divinity and that this is just an experience that we're, that we've had or having if we're still in it and that we deserve to be able to heal and to progress and evolve now if it's a physical thing in our body we can pray and we can meditate and we can nurture ourselves back to health but if it's in our blueprint that we are not going to survive it's not because that person hasn't had enough faith or hasn't done it the right way it's because that's the uniqueness of their path and this earth is where we're visiting consciousness is where we actually come from so we worry a lot about our experience on earth and we should our life is important and we are all significant and we want to have the best life that we can we want to strive to be the full fullness of our own potential but sometimes things happen and sometimes they're meant to and we won't fully understand it until we have crossed over and we should be careful on what we judge on each other because of that but yeah I really feel that people have their own unique paths and that they'll find what works for them the catch is making sure it's something that's resonant with truth and not something that is a pretense because it's easy to be fooled and we've all had a turn of fooling ourselves so you know sometimes we enjoy hearing what we want to hear because we're trying to avoid what we need to confront and we should really let ourselves confront the truth of what's internal because everything is resolvable and it just requires us to be truthful with ourselves so thank you for sharing time and I'm, i hope that something that you've learned from this video either reaffirms what you already knew or opens the door to somewhere that you can explore so thank you and thank you for having me on your show and if you would like more information you can always go to lorrainenylon.com.au website 